Scotts Run Nature Preserve is located in McLean, Virginia, bordering the Potomac River. It was created in 1970 after, by referendum, the local community raised taxes to purchase the land from a developer. Run by Fairfax County Park Authority, this 336-acre area contains trails, a falls, and beautiful views of the Potomac River. Definitely a great place to hike. On today's adventure, uh, we're going to talk about hypothyroidism. So, let's start with the patient case. We have a 32-year-old woman who presents with increasing constipation, bloating, um, and general fatigue. Uh, she mentions that she's been experiencing these symptoms for about six months, and she's had an associated weight gain of about 10 pounds. Uh, she mentions that she is really tired at the end of the day, and she feels like she can't complete uh, the normal tasks that she's accustomed to. She also notes that uh, she's been having this constipation and bloating around the same time period that she's uh, experienced this weight gain. So, what are the type of questions you want to ask her? Um, you want to ask her about uh, if she's on any medications currently. Um, you want to ask her about her stress levels. And uh, you may want to ask her if there's uh, any other circumstances in her life that could be causing these issues. So she mentions that her stress is moderate um, and she's not taking other, any other medications. Well, let's take a look at the physical exam. So, gen in general, she was well groomed and uh, she was cooperative. Uh, of note in the physical exam, the cardiac exam, uh, she was bradycardic. Um, and uh, neurologic exam, she had uh, delayed deep tendon reflexes. And uh, on the extremity exam, on skin, she had dry skin and she had brittle nail beds. Her blood pressure is 100 over 60. Her heart rate is 56. Her respiratory rate is 16. And her temperature is 37 degrees. Let's take a look at the differentials. Uh, we, can, we have uh, Hashimoto's versus subacute thyroiditis, uh, depression. Uh, you can also have medication effects, amiodarone or lithium. Um, and you could also have iatrogenic effects uh, like uh, thyroidectomy. So, uh, the next step would be to order some labs. So, what would you consider some important labs to order? Uh, obviously, we're going to order a CBC, um, CMP, just take a look at the, the baseline levels for the patient. Um, we'd also want to take a look at her TSH. Uh, judging on that, we'd move on to T4 or T3. Uh, we want to do a lipid panel, just to get an idea of what her lipid status is as well. Uh, so, taking a look at uh, the lab results, uh, we see that the CBC and the BMP are, are pretty standard uh, within normal limits. Uh, we see that her TSH is elevated. Um, and her lipids are elevated. So if we're considering Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, we want to take a look um, to see if those antibodies are present uh, in the patient. So we'd want to run a special antibody test uh, looking for thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So uh, if anti-TPO antibodies are positive, then that would give us a, a better idea what's going on. Uh, and the results show that indeed uh, the patient has anti-TPO antibodies in her blood. Now that we talked about the patient case, let's get into the path pathophysiology. So, uh, what makes thyroid hormone important in the body? So let's start about how thyroid hormone is made. We start at the hypothalamus, which releases a thyroid releasing hormone, which stimulates the anterior pituitary to release TSH. Now TSH goes to the thyroid uh, and stimulates the release or the formation and release of thyroid hormone. Uh, there are two forms of thyroid hormone, T3 and T4. The effects of T3 include increasing cardiac output, increasing ventilation rate, increasing basal metabolic rate, and increasing the catabolism of proteins and carbohydrates. Now, let's take a look at the synthesis of T3 and T4. This process occurs inside thyroid follicular cells. A sodium iodide transporter transports two sodium and one iodine molecule into the follicular cell from the blood. Importantly, iodine is transported against its concentration gradient. This form of active transport uses the concentration gradient of sodium to move iodine. When iodine moves, moves across the membrane into the colloid space, thyroid peroxidase oxidizes it from iodide to iodine. This locks the iodine inside the cell. The next step is organification. 
where thyroid peroxidase incorporates iodine and tyrosine into monoiodotyrosine, or MIT, or diiodotyrosine, DIT. When one MIT and DIT molecule are combined, this creates T3, and when two DIT molecules are combined, this forms T4. When TSH from the anterior pituitary binds the TSH receptor, this causes vesicles that contain T3 and T4 in the follicular cell to combine with lysosomal vesicles. Lysosomal enzymes cleave T4 and T3 from the iodinated thyroglobulin. The hormones then leave into the bloodstream. A deficiency of iodine results in a decreased production of active thyroid hormone release. As TSH continues to stimulate the thyroid gland to make more thyroid hormone, the thyroid hormone continues to build. This leads to an enlargement of the thyroid, also known as a goiter. So what is the treatment for hypothyroidism? Oral replacement therapy with levothyroxine. Complications of this treatment can be myxedema coma, which include altered mental status, hypothermia, and hemodynamic instability. And that's hypothyroidism. We went over a patient case, the treatment, the presentation, and pathogenesis. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.